or producer's picks. And now, the feature so many of our listeners wait for each day. Producer's Picks. I'm hoping you guys wait for this each day because I have to be honest, I wait for it each day. Occasionally, I run across one of the stories Jared printed off on the printer and I'm like, oh, these are good. I I consider stealing them, but then I go, yeah, I'll wait. So, Jared, without further ado, please take it away. All right. We got a couple newsy items to begin. Producer's Picks today. One... Announced not too long ago that federal prosecutors will not bring charges against the officer who shot Ashley Babbitt during the quote-unquote insurrection on January 6th. The officer who still has yet to be identified. I was just going to say, I would like to know who the officer is. Right. I mean, uh, Kim Potter's name got out there. Bang, bang. Pretty about, damn I'm sorry, quick. that was a poor choice. Uh, Kim Potter's name got out there very quickly. Why have we still not heard or found out the name of this officer who is now not going to be charged? Yeah, and I remember after the Capitol riots, uh, Byron York, he requested Freedom of Information Act. You can request all sorts of things. And he requested some really basic facts. And it wasn't like the day after. It was, I think it was a pretty, a good few weeks after. And some of the stuff he was requesting was like, how many cops were there? What are their names? How many weapons did you confiscate? How many people were shot? And Jared is absolutely right. When there's something that happens that fits the narrative, and I'm not saying there's things that happen that aren't true. You know, like this shooting with Kim Potter, we've acknowledged several times on today's show that she made a big mistake. But why do those details come out so fast? And the details of January 6th are yet to be open to the public. I think that's I think that's a real that's worth talking about, especially as we kind of know we're the only shots fired that day. Yeah. So exactly. that, it, there, it can't be there can't be anything yeah. difficult to. To narrow it down, we deserve that information as the public. Right. And it's amazing to me that like now, I don't know if people remember this, if for some reason it stuck with me, but after 9-11, Mark Wahlberg talked about, and I hope I'm getting this right, because otherwise I'll feel bad, but talked about if he had been on the plane or or something like that. And it was a situation where I would have done this. And you know how tough guys are. It's like you, you start to play people in movies and you start to think that you're actually the characters that you play. And to talk about an event like Nancy Pelosi's now for a long time, they were saying they were terrified. It was terrible. It was, you know, the, the worst moment in American history, which I've said several times on the show, as says Jared, that it was it was bad. We don't condone what happened that day. It was a bad look for all Americans. But now she's talking about like, oh, I could have taken them, uh, you know, like like a like an old person at a bar with a cig smoking wine. Oh, come at me. I would have shown you. We would have salsa my friend. It's like, what? I thought this was the biggest overthrow of government we'd ever seen. And now Nancy Pelosi w- was capable of taking these people, of fighting them? Uh. Round one. Fight. I choose Nancy. She's like, put him up. Put him up. I one time ripped up Trump's speech. One rip. She's crazy. Have right. some ice cream, Nancy. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of ice cream, thank you for that transition, Can Grace. I say, we're in sync today, Jared. So, you know those hippies at Ben & Jerry's? Mm. Well, anytime there's, you know, a, a national event like this, I uh, I always wonder, what do the guys who make, and I'm going to take hate, who make okay ice cream think about this? Well, Ben & Jerry's released a statement The murder of Dante Wright is rooted in white supremacy and results from the intentional criminalization of black and brown communities. This system can't be reformed. It must be dismantled and a real system of public safety rebuilt from the ground up. Hashtag defund the police. Yeah, I mean, this thirst from these woke corporations to get involved in politics or, you know, major stories, major news stories. It's to me, it's just confusing because I remember this quote and I'm not sure if Michael Jordan actually said it, but it's a quote that over the years, people, you know how that happens. People misattribute quotes and then they just, you know, take on a life of their own. 
people say uh, people say that Michael Jordan had once said Republicans buy sneakers, too. And it was kind of his way of saying, I'm not getting political because you alienate half the consumers of your product. I always understood that. I always understood why Dolly Parton didn't talk about politics because she likes everyone to listen to her music, which is her talent and her gift, and not feel a certain way about her as a person based off her politics. Now, Ben and Jerry's, Jared, you put it, I would say some of their ice cream is really good. I love half-baked. I'm a huge half-baked girl. I also like their mint Oreo because they put real Oreos inside of it. But I don't like it enough to be eating it and being told that, you know, oh, I'm, I'm, you're not woke enough. You're racist. You're this, you're that, which Ben and Jerry's does all the time. I'll have my Brigham's. Now, once Brigham's does something that really frustrates me. That will be a dark day. Then we will have a serious problem. Brigham's coffee ice cream is the best I've ever had. Oh, my God. It's so good. It's so good, Jared. I wish you could have seen some of the old Brigham's when they were up and running. Man. You... I did. Did you? Yeah. I, I, I lived here. I went to Brigham's when I was a kid. Do you understand that what I'm talking about? Yes. Some of those stores, man. Yep. But all I'm saying is it, I can tough. I can talk tough right now. I can be a street fighter against Ben and Jerry's because I have other options. But if Brigham's goes down this road, it's going to be a rocky road. I had to do it. <laughs> all right. So we got some, uh, some Biden news. First Lady Dr. Jill Biden underwent a routine medical procedure today. She was accompanied by Joe Now. We don't know if she performed this medical procedure on herself, but... She is a surgeon general, so... She's a hell of a doctor, according to Whoopi. Yeah, so so she could have done it if she wanted to. She had a a routine medical procedure today, and you'll notice they're not talking about the fact that the First Lady is... uh, has some secret illness that the president is trying to keep from people, as would have happened with Melania. Yeah, I don't know what her um, routine medical surgery was. I hope she's feeling good, though, um, and I hope that she is back in action tomorrow. hope she's resting up. I say that sincerely, not being sarcastic. No, absolutely. And today is International Moment of Laughter Day, April 14th, so it allows us to just play this. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was all. Just one of the reasons to I, he- note International Moment of Laughter Day and play Madame Vice President laughing at the border situation. Well, thank you for playing that, because what I would like to do, since you gave me that segue, I was surprised. Kamala Harris today was talking about the Northern Triangle countries and, you know, how she's going to fix illegal immigration. P.S. Spoiler alert. I have a feeling it's going to involve re-implementing a lot of Trump's old policies, but that's neither here nor there, okay? Okay. There's no more mean tweets and gases through the roof. So you should just be happy with who you voted for. Now, when she mentions this, like always, she's inappropriate. You know, she never takes the situation seriously. I talk about that sometimes on the show. You know, let's say we're talking about Dante Wright. That's a young man who died. Whether or not you agree with my take on it or not, it's, it's a serious issue. It's a grave situation. So I handle it. I try to handle it in that way. She's talking about serious issues, and she cannot help herself but to make them so frivolous and so strange for everyone listening. Now, the only part of this cut that surprises me when she makes her reference to cheers, and I think she was close. I think someone must have told her, you got to stop nervous laughing. So she makes this joke. It bombs. No one laughs. But she holds back, Jared. Notice that. She doesn't let out a, (laughs) ha, 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 ha. Let's play it. They don't want to leave the place where their grandparents lived. They don't want to leave the place where they are familiar with the culture and the language. You know, to use a phrase from an old television show, Cheers, you know, where everybody knows your name. Uh, Most people don't want to leave home. I'm shocked she didn't laugh more at that. Because she laughed at, like, parents who want their kids back in school. And she laughed when they asked her if she was visiting the border. She really belly laughed at that. So at her own jokes, she is not opposed to cracking up. So when she dropped that line about cheers, I would have thought for sure she'd give herself a few. (laughs) Just saying. And on this day, 1865, President Abraham Lincoln is assassinated at the Ford Theater in Washington, D.C. Oh, wow. Very interesting. Yes. 
Thank you for that that fact. Are we done with producer's picks? We are done with producer's picks. All right, guys. Well, since I was in my early 20s, I told you about this. I've struggled with acid reflux. What can I say? I I love fried food. I love ice cream. I was just talking about Brigham's in this last segment. All of that stuff can really contribute to heartburn, to acid reflux, and to just not feeling that great. And I know what you're thinking. Well, Grace, stop eating it. Hell no. I will never stop eating ice cream. I will never stop consuming coffee every single day. So what I did was I started taking Balance 7. And I got to tell you, I've tried a lot of things. Nothing has worked like this. It's your one-stop shopping to help increase your energy levels, aid in digestion, heartburn, and so much more. Check out Balance7.com and learn why balancing your immune system is so important for the performance of your body. Simply drink a total of three ounces a day. And within 72 hours, most people begin to have more energy, greater clarity of thought, and just feel healthier overall. Order your one-month supply at Balance7.com. Use code word GRACEFREE to save $10 off your first order and get free shipping. Be one of the first 50 to purchase Balance 7 and receive Smooth Skin, an exfoliant and deep cleansing skin conditioner valued at $13.99, but you will get it for free. Now, one last time, if you struggle with heartburn or acid reflux or you're just not feeling great, you need a little clarity and you want to feel good every day, well, I can tell you that nothing you're trying compares to Balance 7. Order now, receive $10 off your first order of a 30-day supply, free shipping, and a chance to receive smooth skin. Um, And that is balance7.com, code word, grace free. Now, when we get back, we will be talking to Howie Carr, and we might be playing the cheer theme song one more time, just for good measure. This is the Grace Curley Show. The Grace Curley Show will be right back. 